Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is another from my favorite fountain pen company, Pen BBS. This is a model I've long thought about getting, but was put off because so many people were claiming to have issues with it. This is the Pen BBS 309. It is Pen BBS's first piston filler. I say first because now, of course, there is a new piston filler in the Pen BBS lineup and that is the limited edition Pen BBS 492 magnetic piston filler. This 309 is much more of a standard type piston filler and has some interesting features. I got this one from pen friend and ink guru, ink extraordinaire, Claudia Astrakiza of Bauer Inks in Toronto. This is also in a finish I've never had before, but admired in other people's photos and videos. It is smog. I don't think that's the name of the dragon, but more like London Smog. Well, whatever it is, let's take a closer look at this smogging pen right now. So here's my package from Bauer Inks in Toronto from Claudia. Okay, calm down because there's other things in here. Another Pen BBS box. And it is a 305, ah, it's a 309. This is a 309 in smog. This is the piston filler. And I have not got one of these. I've eyed them. And I've even eyed the smog finish. Wow. So that was the unboxing of this pen just a few weeks ago. That box was chock full of ink, ink samples, and pens. This pen was part of the box, but was a complete surprise, as it was part of a couple of birthday presents Claudia sent to me. I'm still overwhelmed by her generosity. I had ordered a couple of bottles of ink and found this and another Pen BBS fountain pen inside. The other one will be the subject of an upcoming review and is, to put it mildly, spectacular. So stay tuned for that review. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, provide some size comparisons, some measurements, and do a writing sample. After the writing sample, stay tuned as I will discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. In addition to those regular features of my video reviews, I'm going to be showing how to tune this particular nib and how to swap nibs on a Pen BBS fountain pen. I have owned, purchased, and or been given a total of 23 Pen BBS fountain pens. That doesn't include the extra nibs I've purchased or have been given. I can safely say that I know these pens and nibs pretty well. The Pen BBS Fine Nib that comes standard on a majority of the Pen BBS models, which is an upturned Waverly style nib, has become my favorite writing experience that even surpasses my two gold nibs in my Pilot E95S and my vintage Schaefer Targa. One thing that seems to be consistent with these steel Pen BBS nibs is that they tend to write dry right out of the gate. I've learned how to deal with this and it actually is a fairly easy fix. It's easy because even if I screw it up, which I actually have done recently, it isn't such a tragedy because a replacement's only five bucks and comes with a lovely acrylic charm. So when I first tried this pen, and I've been writing with this one for about two weeks now, it started very dry in typical pen BBS fashion, but in this case, it is significantly drier than I've experienced before. I would usually just perform nib surgery on it so it would write to my taste immediately. However, knowing I would be reviewing this pen, I thought it would be a good experiment to do on camera with you watching, especially since this one is so very dry. So, it has been tough writing with a dry, ink-starved pen, but it was also valuable because I was able to evaluate how this pen behaves without tuning. It is still ink-starved, but the nib is writing smoother every day. 
And that just proves to me that, like a guitar that needs a break-in period, a fountain pen needs some time to mold themselves to your writing style and grip. Now let's look at this pen. This pen model has had issues with users since its debut. The one issue people seem to have complained about most is similar to issues the old style 355 had, which is a sticky piston. This one is no exception, and I turned the piston knob and the piston stayed in place and the end cap here unscrewed. The average user can be excused for thinking their pen is broken or screwed up if this happened right out of the box. Pen BBS are not known for copious instructions. Some models have had instructions, but as far as I know, no 309 has had this, this particular feature explained. And I do think this is a feature. I'm going to cut away here to the video I made when I first got the pen and inked it up. Okay, I thought I'd ink this up on camera because this is my first Pen BBS 309. It's the piston filler. I've heard a lot about this pen. Uh, this one is in smog, of course. Uh, beautiful color. I think it's 54, memory serves me correctly. Um, but when you first get it, um, like many piston fillers, that uh, rubber gasket on the piston there hasn't moved in a while and when you first try to move it it gets stuck now this one's moving very nicely now because what i did was if you keep turning this then it will unscrew and you'll get this piece here which attaches to the tail of the piston rod and unlike many piston fillers this one, the section comes off. And again, like many pen, pen BBS pens, it has a silicone gasket right there, just below the, the threads. So I put some silicone grease on that. I pushed the piston out and put some a bunch of silicone grease on that. And you can push that uh, right out of there with a Q-tip. like that and you can see all the grease I put on that and then you can push it right back in again there we go and re-engage the threads and it's back in place first time I tried to turn it it actually locked up on me and the end unscrewed, but that's that's okay actually, because it allows you at that point to put the silicone grease on it. Close up the section. So this way you can get at this pen from both directions when you want to clean it out. So I can take that piston out, clean the whole barrel when it's uh, completely disassembled. Uh, you can take the, the nib collar right out and replace it with another nib collar uh, if you have these little nib charms to swap out your pen BBS nibs, it's very convenient. Now, I, so what I thought I'd do is uh, try my first time fill. Now, this is the first time I've ever tried this unique bottle. This is Ackerman, and it is shocking blue. Shocking Blue number five, how many other shocks they have in their catalog, but this is Shocking Blue. And it has a unique bottle with this, what do you know, bottleneck, right there with a marble or a, a ball of some sort right there. And if you roll it over, the ball goes to the top and the ink will flow down. And then you roll it back and the ball sits right there in the neck and stops any ink from coming out. And then you can open the top And the top is now full of ink. I think this is just the coolest thing. Here we go. So we're going to dip the entire nib and feed and part of the section in the ink. And if you rotate the piston down, the nice thing about the demonstrator version is you can actually see the ink happening. But this works for opaque pens as well. Now, that should have generated, and it did, some bubbles in the ink. And we'll start seeing the ink flowing up. So 
So you can see I had a pretty good fill there. But what you can also do is you can pump that piston back up. Now that you can see it, I can pump that piston back up to force that air up into the section. What I do is try to look at where the ink goes in the feed there. And if it starts pushing out like it is right now, that feed is now saturated. And you tip it back over again into the ink and then you can twist it back up the rest of the way. That's what you call a super fill. That's a trademark. Nobody else used that. That's trademarked by Doug. And uh, beware of Doug because I have secret police and I will come and find you if you use my patented Super Doug phrase. Well, that's rather nice. Now that I've inked it up with Ackerman Shocking Blue, let's take a closer look at this pen. Overall, the acrylic is amazing in person. The depth of those swirls and that clear as glass, uh, clear parts of the acrylic are really quite remarkable. The cap finial is of the same material and is in a conical shape. And it actually unscrews from the pen. And there is a chrome ring right there. And it holds the clip in place. The clip is springy and very usable. And is in the shape seen on the Pen BBS 308. So that's the same clip you see there. The cap tapers up to a large chrome band, cap band, that has Pen BBS on one side and 309 stamped on the other side and on the shoulders a script P on both sides. There is a small step down to the barrel which is straight until about here and it tapers down to the blind cap which has another chrome ring and ends in the mirror image conical end. The cap unscrews in about two turns to reveal a section made of the same material, smog acrylic, and tapers down to a flared end towards the nib, which is a number six size fine nib. Let's take a closer look. And of course there's the plastic feed. The Pen BBS nib has some scroll work around it and it says Pen BBS since 2005 has an F for fine and says China. The pen fits in the hand very very nicely. It's a good size and is fairly light. The section is very comfortable and those threads are smooth and you don't even feel them. The cap posts deeply and securely and because the cap is so light it really doesn't back weight the pen. It's still slightly nib heavy but heavy is not a word I would describe for this pen even full of ink. I think I prefer to write with this pen posted. If you like posting your pens you'll like this pen as well. I think it posts as well if not better than my 456, my 480, and my 308s. Here's my 456 in clear glass. Posts very, very nicely. It's not back heavy, but it's certainly heavier in terms of the cap and overall. The pen is heavier with all of that metal. Here is my 308 of the Four pens, it doesn't post as securely because you can actually knock that off if you try, but it is postable. And again, there's more, seems to be more weight in that cap on the 308. And here is the 480, which I've always appreciated the way this one posts. It sort of posts flush with the body. That's the way a pen should post, as far as I'm concerned. And it's very, very writable when it's posted. But uh, this smog, I think, just from, I haven't looked at the numbers yet, 
but just from the feel in the hand, feels lighter than all of those pens and is very, very comfortable posted. So I'm going to pause here for a moment just to gush yet again, pardon the pen pun, about Pen BBS. What other fountain pen manufacturer offers this kind of variety? Look at this. Here are four different pens with different shape sections and bodies available with a huge variety of finishes, all for under $40 US each. The lowest price is the 308, not this finish, but a clear glass 308 will go for $13.99 US. This 308 model has been made in 57 different finishes, including this gorgeous Amber is a Cat. The 309, remember it's a piston filler, is $22.99, has been made in about 13 finishes. The 480, this beautiful torpedo shaped pen, cigar shaped, is only $17.99 in its base models, not this one, this is the Amber is a Cat, um, and has been made in at least 15 finishes. And this 456, a vacuum filler, mind you, is only $31.99 has, and has been made in at least 10 finishes, one of which is an exceedingly rare finish, and you'll see it very soon. So who does this? Uh, that's a question I'm seriously asking. Who does this? All these pens have nib options from extra fine to fine to round fine and round medium. Plus, the number six nib can be swapped for a Yovo, a Box, Schmidt, Knox, Nemocene, the list goes on. Let me know in the comments if you know of another company that has this high quality fit and finish, low price, huge variety of models, and finish options. I'd be really interested to know. Anyone? Bueller? 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 Okay, gushing over. Let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here we are with the Pen BBS 309 next to a Pen BBS 308, a Pen BBS 480, a Pen BBS 456, and a Conklin Durograph. Now let's look at them posted. Okay, so here we have the five pens posted. Here's the 309, the 308, the 480, the 456, and a Conklin Durograph. All of them have number six nibs. This is not the original nib on that Conklin Durograph. It had a black Conklin nib on it. I've replaced that with a rose gold colored Natami. Uh, number six nib so that here's more variety from pen bbs every one of these sections is different so they all have slightly different shapes this one's uh more of a concave shape on the 480 and the 456 also has a concave shape but without that lip the 480 has the lip this is more like a barrel shape that tapers on the 308 you'd think that the 309 would have exactly the same shape section as the 308 but the lip is slightly different than that one. What we're seeing is a lot of experimentation by the designers of Pen BBS to give the user a lot of different variety, which I find fascinating. No, but it is interesting. Of course it's fascinating. It's very, very nice for the end user to have all the selection. Find a pen combination of section, nib, uh, posting ability, body shape, filling style, finish, all those things in combination that you love. I'm sure you're going to find something that you like at Pen BBS. Commercial over, let's look at some measurements and then I'll be back with a writing sample. And 
we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pen BBS. Three oh nine, and it is smog, smog. Maybe, no, I think it's spelled smog that way, and it is a fine. Steel nib and the ink is Ackerman Shocking Blue. Now to the heart of the matter. So this is actually a lot wetter right now. I've been writing with this pen for two weeks. And this is a lot wetter than it has been in the past. When it first came out of the box, it was uh, more like that. Um, so this just proves to me that what you can do is continue to write with the pen. And by massaging it, pushing on it, you know, not pushing it to the point of springing it, but pushing on it. And you can spread those tines out a little bit better without actually doing surgery on the pen. As to line variation, again, in typical pen BBS fashion, that's no weight at all. That's pushing it a bit, not getting much line variation. It's a very stiff steel nib. They're typically stiff. But it's interesting that because this is a Waverly type grind on this fine point, you will get a thicker line in the horizontal stroke than you will get in the vertical stroke. And of course, this being very dry, I'm not getting much of that. Let me just bring out another pen here for a moment. I know this is unusual for my pen review, but this might be of interest. This is my Moonman M800. Uh, this is the favorite pen in my entire collection right now. This is a Pen BBS Fine Waverly two-tone uh, nib that I put in it. And it is just the wettest. Look at the difference here. I'm getting some really nice thick lines horizontally, thin lines vertically. So when you do this, you're getting a thicker line than when you do that. And it is very, very wet, as you can see. And that nib is identical to this one and can be made to write as well as this one. So let's hear this one write. That's just wonderful. Smooth, a little bit of feedback, but again, I'm skipping a little bit and some of the lines are drying out here. As you can see that L, that was not me lifting my nib off the page. That was the, the, the nib running dry. Now before I go further, I did want to show the test card on the Ackerman ink. There it is in shocking blue. And uh, I'm not sure whether you can see that sheen on there or not, but it goes from a, a very, very bright blue to almost a deep purple. Smoke on the water. Smoke on the water. And here it is with KWZ Azure number five and Hiroshizuku Asagao. Let's look at some reverse writing here. 
It does not do it at all. I'm not surprised. And fast writing is going to be a challenge as well here. As you can see, there's a lot of skipping going on here as the, the nib runs dry. So let's see what we can do with this nib. This is my surgery tool of choice. This is a spark plug gapping tool. You start with an 002. Now you can use a brass shim if you like on this, but uh, these are precise sizes and you can move up in gauge as you continue to floss your nib. So this is nib flossing 101 here. I like to start with the lower gauge. This is 0 0.002 hope I'm on camera here. And you take the tip of the gapping tool and put it into the breather hole. And I also take the pen and sort of angle it down towards the page so the nib is resting on the page. This gives a lot of stability to this so it's not moving around as I'm trying to do this. And I'm going to fit that into the breather hole and then slide it the length of the slit. Now, that didn't give me any resistance at all, so I'm going to move up a gauge, and I recommend doing this in stages because I went straight for my usual gap, which is, I usually end up with four, 0 .004, um, but I did that on a pen BBS nib and I wrecked it by not gauging it up. So, here is point zero zero three. Are we still on camera? Yeah. Going into the breather hole, and I'm flossing down, and that has actually a little bit more resistance, but not a lot. So I can do that a few times. And then I'm going to check. Now this has been open for a while, of course. Now it's still very, very dry. So I'm going to move up to the four. I have used 0 0.005 once. Into the breather hole. And I'll do something slightly different. First we'll floss down. And I'm getting a lot of resistance here. I'm going to floss down a couple of times. And I pull it out straight so that I don't pull it out at an angle. It's a mistake I made on my last nib. I pulled it out at an angle and I kind of made a V-shape in the, in the tipping material. It's still not being very wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the breather hole, floss down. When I get it down here, past the feed, I'm still engaged with that nib, but I'm going to pull slightly to the side and hold it there, and slightly to the other side, and hold it there, and then pull out straight. Now I'm continuing to use my loop at this point to check that the tines are in alignment. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit wetter. Yeah. That's, oh, that's nice and juicy now. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. That's now so smooth, just like glass on the page. I had no idea whether that would work or not. I could have destroyed the pad live on camera. But again, five bucks and you got another one. 
to, to experiment with. Okay, so I got so excited about tuning that nib to the point where it's writing beautifully now. I forgot all about the fact that I was going to show you how to swap nibs on a pen BBS pen like this. So this one's already inked up. I've already got ink on my fingers, so what the hell as they say. Let's, uh, let's go for it. So first of all, the simple way of swapping nibs is to get yourself another pen BBS nib. I got this one in a nib charm. The acrylic is called Summer. It's very pretty. And there's our nib. We just unscrew it from the key ring and it will screw right into this section. Now this section is full of ink and so is the nib. So again, I'm going to put this little rubber mat around things so that I don't squash that feed and I'm holding it by the shoulders of the nib, not the fins. And I'm going to use my handy little ink miser to hold my pen so it doesn't spill ink all over the place. Let's put that back there. Now I've got a number of number six nibs here, just a generic a number six nib, a Jin Hao two-tone nib, a Fully Wen medium nib, lots of different choices, but this is a Schmidt. Uh, this came in my Moonman M600, and this one is a Bach, and this came in my Moonman M800. First of all, I'm going to take the nib charm nib, and we'll just screw that nib into the section. There we are, and that will just write fine, or medium, or whatever nib you swap. That's the easiest thing to do. Just take one pen BBS nib out and swap another one in. The little bit more challenging thing is to take a pen BBS nib collar, pen BBS feed, and I got this out of a pen parts package, which you can get on Etsy, and I'm going to swap in, say, my Bach. Get that feed up right into that intersection, right there with the nib. I just hold it lightly like this, and then push it in just a little bit, and then get my rubber mat here, and push on the shoulders of the nib until it's seated all the way. I'm going to push just on that curved section of the feed to make sure that feed is all the way in. Then I'm going to align this there so that it's lined up. And we just screw that down. So there is the Bach nib in the 309. I'm going to give it a writing sample. Ooh, that's very nice. Very wet. I almost like this better than the Pen BBS. Isn't that funny? Because I didn't like this Bach nib in my Moon Man, but I quite like it in this Pen BBS. It's all the combination of nib and feed and ink. And of course, uh, the feel of the pen. Those combinations, you change them around. One nib in one pen feels disappointing, and you move it, change the ink, and it's amazing the results you can get. There you go. So there you have it, the Pen BBS 309 in smog. Now, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, there are a lot of likes. I have to be honest with my love of Pen BBS. Of course, everyone has different tastes, but there's a lot to love about this pen. First is just the way it feels, balanced in the hand, either posted or unposted. It's just a very, very comfortable pen. The finish, as in all finishes from Pen BBS, is really spectacular. The clear parts of this resin are like glass, 
and it is highly, highly polished. The fit and finish of this pen is extraordinary for a sub $40 Chinese fountain pen. And the price, you're getting a piston filler that takes a ton of ink for like 23 bucks. I mean, come on. Oh, oh, yeah. What? I mean, I know that you can get piston fillers a lot cheaper. There's the Wing Sung piston filler. You can get some for four bucks, but nothing with this kind of quality, I don't think, for in this price range. And what are the things not to like about this pen? Well, the sticky piston issue, of course, would be an issue for some. But as piston fillers go, this one would be easier to maintain than a Mont Blanc or a Pelican. I don't believe those piston fillers allow you to take it literally to pieces to clean. Now, do they? I don't think they do. The other issue is the nib out of the box. If I had no knowledge or ability to tune a nib, this pen would be a disappointment for me. It would go in the drawer and be uninked, I'm sure. However, even without nib tuning abilities, just swap another nib into the pen. Five bucks. Unscrew, screw, ink, write, c'est tout. C'est fini. Ça ne fait rien. You spoke French. <laughs> later, later. The discussion about Pen BBS 309 might be moot in any case. I expect this model will disappear when stock runs out. If you like this pen, you should scamper over to Etsy right now and get one while they still have them. Then just wait the mandatory two months for it to arrive. I expect this new model will be a magnetic piston filler similar to the limited edition 492 and it will replace this screw type piston with a magnetic filler in Pen BBS's line of acrylics. I could be wrong, of course. I was wrong about the new improved 355, but I still think my design was better. Maybe we will see it someday. Thanks go out to Claudia Asterkiza of Bauer Inks in Toronto for gifting me this beautiful pen. Thank you so much. I'm just overwhelmed. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever new videos are posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.